What's up everybody, it's Borgman Retro, back in the video for you guys, and today we got a brand new video, and it's about the NBA, in particular the main topic, it's about Zach Levine, of the Chicago Bulls obviously, and um, as you know, if you watched uh, one of my previous videos, I talked about how uh, Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls uh, mutually agreed to, you know, um, pretty much part, uh, like part ways, uh, you know, find a new home, a new destination, and that's currently happening, right, um, because uh, I don't know if you saw it recently, but uh, there's this video of Zach Levine, you know, uh, after the Chicago Bulls made their comeback against uh, the Miami Heat, um, pretty much his, one of the PR directors or whatever, they asked him, uh, they were trying to get him for an interview, and then he just kind of, you know, rubbed him, rubbed him off, whatever, shrugged him off. And, uh, yeah, he's trying to get out of there, as uh, you can tell. Um, but just before that, I'm pretty sure, uh, this report came out about the Raptors saying that, this from Shams, saying that, quote, I'm told the Raptors are also expected to have some level of interest in Zach Levine. Um, so, first of all, before I even, you know, go into this about, you know, my stance about this, um, I just want to preface that, you know, I'm not a big Zach Levine fan. I just think he's overrated. I don't think he's as good as he is, okay? Um, he definitely is a number one option, okay? That's for sure, okay? That is for sure. Um, but I don't know, I just, I just don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. I don't know, people hype him up and everything, like, yeah, he's like, you know, he does these, like, flashy dunks and everything, right? Uh, you know, we know that, um... You know, he can shoot really well, but, like, I don't know. I, I don't see how he's, like, people hype him up like he's, like, a, like a superstar. No, he, he really isn't. He's not even close, actually. He is not, he cannot be a number one on your, uh, number one option on your team. But, anyways, we've seen this, everything. We've seen that. Um, but, yeah, he's trying to get out. And from this report, pretty much, bro, first of all, I just want to say, the Raptors, they, they've been doing this, bro, like, forever, bro, for the past few years, as long as I can pretty much remember. Um, they have interest in, obviously, uh, most recently, Dame, uh, you know, that didn't happen. We know what happened with that uh, Shams tweet. He had uh, the Raptors or whatever. Um, but, yeah, no. The Raptors are interested in all these people, but they never really do anything about it. Okay, that's pretty much what it is. They just don't really give out, I guess, the best offers. Um, they just don't go for it. That's pretty much what it is. They always have interest, but they don't do anything. So, I highly doubt the Raptors get them. Like, there, there's almost, like, close to 0% chance. I'll say I'll say a 1% chance of this happening. Just because, you know, still anything can happen, right? But the Raptors right now, the, the state they're at right now, yeah. So I'll just go, that's one of the reasons, but I'll go over the reasons why I don't think Zach Levine, uh, the Raptors should trade for Zach Levine. The first thing, salary issues. Um, so as we know, he last year signed like that $220 million contract, you know, that big extension worth five years. Um, yeah, that's a lot to pay, man. That is a lot for Zach Levine. Is he worth that? No. <laughs> the Bulls just had to pay him that, and uh, any other team, if he was on, would have to pay that too, just because. Um, otherwise you're going to lose him and some other team will probably pay him that. So that's the problem. Um, but then also I don't, you know, he, he fits the Raptors needs, which is, you know, they need to score a bucket getter, uh, someone that can pretty much, you know, shoot and, uh, you know, handle the ball that can actually, you know, make clutch shots, stuff like that, you know? Um, but he just filled the need, but also I think another thing is that he, you're just giving up too much. I've seen people, uh, come up with these offers like Gary Trent Jr. and stuff, um, and pretty much like filler, bro. And that's not going to work. The Bulls are wanting way more than that, okay? That is just not enough, okay? That this, Yeah, it's not going to cut it. You're going to have to give up a few picks, a few first-round picks. Um, what else? Probably, honestly, they're going to want someone close to equal level, if not more. So the only way I see this deal getting done is if they, not even, I don't even think Pascal can get this deal done. Even if they put in Pascal, the Bulls, I don't even think would want him. That wouldn't make sense for them. They'd have to want, you know, a young player. Also, you're not getting with Scotty, bro. Are you kidding me? So I don't really see what players can, um, like OG, no. We're not, why would we give OG? It doesn't make sense. There's no player I can think of that both sides would agree on, you know, for a deal. Also, I feel it's not the right time to make this deal, in particular for Zach Levine, um, because I don't think he's going to raise our ceiling enough to the point where it'll uh, validate this trade, you know, because um, you're going to have to give up a lot for him, okay? It's just, it's just not the right time because also you have a whole bunch of impending free agents. Uh, you have to decide that, and then getting Levine is going to impact those decisions you make um, for the worst, actually. Um, and also we're just stuck in the middle right now. I just feel like there's too much going on. Uh, we're, we're not good enough, not nearly good enough. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really say it makes sense. And also the next uh, reason is, uh, due to CBA issues. So the new, uh, CBA goes into effect this season or this like upcoming off season. Um, and then because of that, we're not going to be able to, uh, retain all our players. Um, pretty much, uh, yeah, because of this trade or even in general, because OG's going to want a lot more money. Uh, Siakam too, and uh, we can't get both of them. 
unless you want to go into the you know luxury tax and stuff like that uh and then also impacts like um what's it called it also impacts the amount of um pretty much type of players you can have because then you're gonna have to get if you have three max players uh like the suns for example then you have to do the same things as the suns which is you know sign fed minimum players uh and the raptors are in no state to do that bro uh that's just yeah right now no Gain levine means you'd have to get rid of um one of pascal or scotty or sorry uh not pascal or scotty pascal or uh, og and even then i don't think the raptors want to go into go that deep in it's not really worth it it doesn't make sense so even then you might have to let go of uh, both of them and yeah that's just not it i'm gonna be honest and then also you're not gonna be able to retain any of your bench players so like auto um malachi stuff like that um and your team's gonna be worse overall off the bench and our bench is already dirt so having even dirt more dirt of a bench is just not it um yeah that, that really isn't it it's been better lately but yeah this is not it and that's kind of just like my rough reasons for why i think um we shouldn't get levine um i know a lot of you might disagree with that but you know uh, that's just how i feel speaking of the phoenix suns our next topic is about bradley beal um who you know has been in on the lineup did injury right he was uh out for the first like eight games of the season um due to um an injury um and yeah he's out again uh this is from shams he says suns star bradley beal will be out and reevaluated re in three weeks as he continues to rehab a low back strain i'm pretty sure this is what he's been going through uh before the season started even um that's why he was out and stuff so it keeps on happening um and cage is getting cursed man with the nets they didn't play many the big three didn't play many games together and now uh sons that's what's starting off like um him and booker still cooking though so you know that's nice uh but yeah also you want all three of them place so that when it comes to playoff time they have the chemistry and stuff and they know uh when to pass to each other at their you know the spots they like and stuff like that because uh that's how you win games man that's the most important thing if you don't know what your teammates uh like how they play their style and stuff their spots it's not gonna work man you're getting exposed and the suns need that bro they need their big three like on that man like on the money because um you know they don't really have that much defense so uh yeah their offense has to be you know on point in order to win games and in the playoffs man if you don't have defense you're gonna get cooked okay like you know yeah uh you need both so the sun's really banking on that so they need bradley beal to be uh fully healthy and uh yeah to play his best because when he was coming back um he wasn't his best you could tell something was going on um he's playing all right not that good could play better so yeah that's why uh, but hopefully comes back healthy. I have him on my fantasy team, and he's just been, um, yeah, subpar, to say the least. Uh, yeah, but besides the point, hopefully he comes back healthy, and the uh, Suns can cook, man. Three of them. The big three can cook. The next topic is another injury. Um, it's about Memphis Grizzlies guard Marcus Smart, uh, who is expected to miss multiple weeks with a left ankle injury. Obviously, it says here another uh, tough absence for the Grizzlies early season, and um, he's expected to miss three to five weeks. Uh, so that's tough. Um, I had Marcus Smart, I drafted him in my fantasy, and he was, like, on my team for the first, like, few weeks, like, the first two weeks, and I dropped him because his production went down and stuff, but that was probably due to the injury, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how long he had this injury for, maybe he just got it recently, but uh, he literally was cooking to begin the season, and then there's like, a dramatic, like, drop-off, so I'm guessing that's what happened. I was, I was confused, I'm like, bro, he's, like, cooking, and then this happened, uh, so that was probably why, but, man, he was, he was helping them, man, at the beginning. Even though they weren't getting many wins, he was still you know, helping them obviously score, you know, uh, his defense, we all know how that is, it's really good, um, so that, that's tough, man, they don't, they don't draw it as, as it is, and it's already tough from the win game, so this is gonna be even more tough, um, yeah, and, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., man, uh, you guys know my feelings on him, uh, but yeah, this is tough for the Grizzlies, man, another person down, another person down, but, you know, at least that Bismack Biombo they got, you know, Bismack's been cooking, so that's good, but yeah, hopefully, um, Hopefully Marcus Smart comes back good, man. I, I like seeing him healthy, man, because uh, he's actually really good, man. When he gets the ball a lot more, he actually can do things. He can actually do things. Like, he can legit be, like, a 20-point scorer um, with, like, you know, five assists a game. Uh, even five rebounds, to be honest. But, yeah, you don't want that. You don't want him like that, you know, obviously, because that means your team's, uh, you know, not doing that well. But, yeah, man, when Jaw comes back, him and Jaw are going to be nice together, bro. That's going to be nice. And lastly, I don't got many thoughts about this, but, you know, just wanted to, you know, tell you guys about this. Um, this is from Woj. He said that NBA is requiring LaMelo Ball to cover a tattoo below his left ear, that the league insists violates rules against exposing commercial logos on players' bodies, a policy that sources close to Ball contend has been infrequently enforced. Uh, so pretty much the NBA is just saying, yeah, LaMelo, you gotta, you know, you gotta cover up that tattoo of yours. It's, um, pretty much endorsing, you know, brands and stuff. And the NBA doesn't allow that unless, you know, they themselves allow it, you know what I mean? Like, unless it's for the entire, you know, league or something like that. Um, you know, unless they're getting the money, pretty much, you know, that's what they're saying. Um, and then the policies that, and pretty much, Ball's camp is pretty much just saying, okay, 
but uh, you guys like are enforcing it on a consistent basis, right? It's like just infrequent. So it's like sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Uh, that was like one of their arguments. And then uh, Woj further explains, in part, NBA spokesman uh, tells ESPN, quote, we try to enforce the rule reasonably in accordance with its purpose and taking into account players' efforts to express themselves in a non-commercial manner. But LaMelo Ball's neck tattoo is an obvious violation of the rule and accordingly he's required to cover it. So they're saying, nah, this is like his tattoo. Um, no, nah, it's a... You know, it's in violation. It's, uh, you know, promoting, you know, brands and stuff like that, which is obviously, like I said, not allowed. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that you're wondering, what is this tattoo? Lamel's tattoo. It says here in the article, Ball has the initials LF, tattoo on his body, short for La France, uh, which is his middle name. And now is the name of his clothing brand. So that there's the thing. So there's the conflict of interest there. So that's like a kind of like a gray area because it's like, Lamel could say, yo, this is for, I got it before, right? So it's for my middle name stuff, but the NBA could still just be like, nah, man. Um, and I also made other few notes about it, pretty much like one other thing that the NBA and Lamel are trying to find a long and short term res uh, resolution for the tattoo. Um, I don't really know what they're going to do about this. I don't really know. It's either like you allow it or you don't. You know what I mean? I know they've been covering it. That's what it says in the article in the last few games. He was covering it. I forget with what, but yeah, he was covering it. Um, but yeah, I guess that's going to have to be how it is because uh, I guess, yeah, it's for the brand. But let me know what you think down below about that. That's. It also happened to uh, Lonzo, I'm pretty sure. That's what's in the article. Um, yeah, interesting. I don't really have many thoughts for that. That's just the rules. Yeah, let me know what you think down below. And that's it for the video. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.